I'm with CAGC HQ, and I'm so excited to welcome you to today's webinar with Nutanix, talking about how you can unify your EUC hybrid multi-cloud deployments with, uh, with the help of Nutanix and Citrix. Um, but before we get into that, I'm just going to introduce um, the people who are with us today. We have Case Baggerman. He's a senior technical director of EUC um, at Nutanix. He's also a CTP. Hi, Case. Hey, Stephanie. And we also have David Brett, a senior solutions architect and also a CTP from Nutanix. Hello, Dave. Hey there. And then joining us from Citrix is Paul Murray. He's a principal technical marketing manager. Um, welcome, Paul. I believe this is the first time we've had you on our webinar stage. I think it is, yeah. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm not a CTP. I'm, I work <laughs> for Citrix. That's the reason why. <laughs> All right. Um, well, I am going to turn things over to your capable hands and um, let you get started. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and you are free to take it away. Okay, you see that, right? Yes. Okay, over to you, Paul. Yeah, so who goes first? We've practiced this a lot. Um, so, introduction. Um, so, first of all, thanks, Stephanie. Thanks uh, for trying to or for inviting me to this uh, webinar. Um, so, like I said, it's the first one I've actually done as a webinar. I've done a few CUG, CU, CUGC events, um, but I. I don't know why I try to keep away from these things. Um, I've been at Citrix for back at Citrix for two years now. Um, I was at Nutanix for five years, and prior to that, at Citrix for 16, 17 years. So I've been around the the block a little bit. Um, I think Case is going to say it a different way, but yeah, I, I've played with the technology a little bit. Um, Case, would you just like to say a couple of words about yourself? I think Stephanie already uh, did a, uh, a a good job. So I I lead the um, the solutions engineering team for end user computing within Nutanix. We write reference architectures, best practice guide, solution notes. Uh, we'll present that CUGCs. We do a lot of benchmarking and testing, and some of that you'll see in in this deck as well. And when there's a uh, a large or strategic deal, uh, field teams can pull us in, and uh, and we we help as much as we can. Um, prior to Nutanix, I worked in the field as a solution architect for about seven years, focusing on end user computing. Um, so, you know, that's that's a bit about me. Dave, your boss, be polite. Yeah, <laughs> so I'm a senior solutions architect at Nutanix. Um, worked with Citrix and Nutanix for a long time now. Uh, been a CTP for a number of years. Worked for Case in the uh, performance engineering team looking after all things performance, Nutanix, and the EUC. All right, cool. So I'll try and be serious. I find it difficult. I get nervous doing these <laughs> webinars, but I'll, I'll try and be serious. Um, so I mean, the three of us, we're going to take you through today's session. It's around um, the, the sort of hybrid multicast story of Nutanix and Citrix. Uh, I'll be doing the introduction. Dave is actually going to take the main part with Nutanix Cloud Clusters, explain what all that technology and I think Casey's going to round it off with running Citrix on uh, cloud clusters or NC2. I'm not sure whether the whether it's being recorded or not, um, but if it is, we can get that recording out to you. And I think Stephanie's already posted it on the chat, but so it's difficult to make it interactive on the webinar, but ask as many questions as you can. Um, the more questions we can answer, the more value you're going to get out of this session itself. So, again. Yeah. Um, we talked about it earlier, but before we actually did the, the webinar last week, if we had our way, we'd do 45 minutes or an hour, hours worth of Q&A. No slides, but it's up to you. Ask questions and we can get those answered. So this hybrid multi-cloud story with Citrix, um, let me sort of try to explain that. So this slide or this picture is probably nothing new to most of the attendees. Um, so what we're seeing a lot today is you, you, you sort of end up with siloed brokers. So what I mean about that is you could have an infrastructure or a set of infrastructure that is on-prem. You could have another set of infrastructure that is cloud-based. Uh, essentially, they are 
pretty much identical. Uh, so you have your um, infrastructure run your uh, applications or desktops that is on-prem based. You have a similar or a same sort of architecture that's cloud-based to run the same applications, uh, same desktops and, and the like. Now, there's a few reasons why this happens. One, it could be licensing. It could be licensing constraint. Uh, for whatever reason, you have to start at, as a, as a cloud-based deployment. You could also be in a situation where you're starting to move to the cloud or you've already started to move to the cloud over the years. So you've, you've gone from an on-prem solution to a cloud-based solution. Um, you also might be in a situation where you started in the cloud and you're finding okay, costs or whatever are too, uh, too, are too much and you're wanting to move back to an on-premises solution. So again, what we typically see or what we end up with is two sets of infrastructure, a side of infrastructure or a side of brokers that basically do the same thing, on-prem uh, and cloud-based. The downside of this is everything segregated. Um, there's two environments to manage. There's two sets of applications to manage. There's two sets of desktops to manage. There's two sets or multiple sets of master images and stuff to, to manage. Um, so it becomes a headache to be able to manage that complete environment. So going forward, what we're starting to see is the the move to um, let me get the right screen. I move to a a siloed cloud infrastructure, if you want to use that term. Now, the only real difference here is we've moved the brokering infrastructure into the cloud. Um, in the Citrix world, that is the Citrix cloud solution. Basically, the, connect, the, the users or the employees will connect through to that. Um, that brokering subsystem will then find out where is that application? Is it on-prem? Is it cloud-based? And will broker that the, the user connection to the respective cloud. Um, in the Citrix world, like I said, that is the Citrix, Citrix cloud platform. Um, but what we've seen over the years is more and more people are starting, more and more customers are starting to go that way. So we're getting towards the, the, the situation where we're slowly building a hybrid multi-cloud uh, environment. Before, sorry, before I go into this one, um, just you go back a slide, sorry, Dave. Um, I just wanted to point out one thing here. So. Today, we're talking about this cloud uh, cloud control plane or web studio. So that is essentially your management, cloud, management control plane in the cloud. Uh, what we've been doing the last sort of six months, or 12 months or so at Citrix is we're also offering the solution or the ability to be able to have that management experience on-prem. So the, um, the web studio is going to become an on-prem solution. So if you want to do it purely on-prem, we can do that as well. Today, they do, they do not have a feature parity, but going forward, the intention is to have a feature parity between those two management platforms. So you can choose, do I manage from the cloud or do I manage from on-prem? Okay, so going forward, like I said, or like I was gonna say is, we're starting to build this hybrid multi-cloud platform. There's one piece that is essential to be able to do that, and that is to have a common platform across these silos, at the moment, across these silos. So we need to have a common platform to be able to achieve um, a, a simplified manageability of the private cloud stuff and the public cloud stuff. We've already moved the, the, the brokering subsystem to the cloud, but what we need, like I said, is, is, is a common software stack or a common platform to be able to run those applications, those desktops on the same platform, whether that platform is on-prem or whether that platform is public cloud. So in the bottom piece of that slide, you see this common platform. Now, the next step behind this is to be able to move uh, certain components to this platform. So David's going to talk about uh, Nutanix clusters later on. But essentially, this Nutanix, cl this Nutanix cloud platform, I need to slow down, is the, the magic ingredient in being able to build this multi-cloud hybrid cloud platform, multi-cloud hybrid cloud solutions. Um, it's not just... Nutanix AI, AI, uh, AHV is not just a, a um, sort of limited to the, the Nutanix platform, but it also has the ability to be able to run Nutanix clusters. So this whole concept of a Nutanix architecture to be able to run that on bare metal AWS or bare metal on Azure. So again, we're building out an infrastructure where you as a customer can decide, do I run that on-prem? Do I run some of those applications um, on a, on AWS bare metal, or do I run some of those applications on Nutanix running on Azure on bare metal? So again, it gives us the, the freedom, the flexibility to be able to decide 
where do I run those applications based on certain criteria, based on security criteria, based on cost or whatever. So essentially what we do in the first step is it gives us the ability to be able to take the images. So if we look at the, the next sort of, the next sort of uh, image, it gives us the ability, like I said, to be able to take those images and run those anywhere on that cloud platform. So essentially what we would build is a new tenants cluster for your on-prem stuff, a new tenants cluster on AWS, for example, on your cloud, on your public cloud platform. And we have that single image or very few images. Now I know Citrix over the years, we've always talked about the power of one, the single image. Honestly, there are very, very few companies that have a single image. But what this gives us the, the ability to do is to reduce the amount of the images down to a minimum. And that image, can run on an on-prem solution or a cloud solution. Why? Because the underlying platform, the Nutanix cloud platform is the same. It doesn't matter whether it's running on-prem or on AWS or Azure. So again, the ability to be able to manage multiple or manage single images or fewer images across a single cloud platform. What that also means is this, um, this image in, in, in a sense becomes portable. So my complete infrastructure, if you, look at, if you look at Citrix in the Nutanix world, Citrix is just an application, it's a workload. It's a workload that I need to run on this cluster. Uh, I can run that on-prem, on cloud, it doesn't really matter. So I've got essentially workload portability. So I can run those applications, those desktops, my, my Citrix infrastructure on public cloud or on on-premises cloud, on, on, on Nutanix AV, on Nutanix AHV, so slow down. Um, so again, it gives us the ultimate freedom, the ultimate flexibility in where to run those applications. Uh, let me catch up. This then ties into what we, so when I say we, what, what Citrix calls this digital workspace. So the, the virtual apps and desktops, um, the secure browser technologies, the gateway services, analytics, uh, Citrix DAS, that is essentially um, our offering. And in the Nutanix world, in the Nutanix view, it's just a workload that runs on this cloud platform. So the Nutanix cloud platform comes with the infrastructure services, basically everything that is required to be able to run those applications, everything is required to be able to do disaster recovery, high, avail high availability, uh, that sort of stuff, running on uh, the cluster technology or the, 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 the architecture that Nutanix has. And like I said, that can be hybrid cloud or public cloud, and essentially, it, it enables this one-click mobility for seamless operations, run it where it makes most sense. In a summary, um, <laughs> trying to be serious, uh, the yin and yang, um, apparently we're complementary. I <laughs> There's various ways of saying this. Uh, I think Jerry, when he first presented it, talked about carrots and peas. Um, I'm English, I was born in the UK, I can say fish and chips. There's very different ways of saying it. Um, but the two technologies are complementary. Um, like I said, I've worked at both companies. In my mind, I just talk about running this workload. And in my mind, in my opinion, running Citrix on Nutanix just makes most sense. It's that flexibility that everybody wants to be able to run these applications and work, these workloads. So I think I've taken too much time. Um, one, more, one last slide, sorry, I forgot this one, is the way we describe that is Nutanix is our preferred choice for HCI. So when it comes to a hyper-convergent infrastructure, we are always going to be talking about Nutanix. When it comes to Nutanix, now Dave's going to take over, uh, Nutanix will talk about Citrix being the preferred um, solution for EUC, VDI, and DAS workloads. Over to you, Dave. Thanks, Paul. Um, so I'm going to just give you a, a Nutanix Cloud Clusters overview. So what it is, how it works, where it runs. Um, I will probably default to referring to it as NC2. So any time I reference NC2, that's how we refer to Nutanix Cloud Clusters. So let me just build this out. Um, at any point, or well, at some point, there's going to be a journey for your business and you're going to get to a point where you're making a decision and there's a fork in the road, whether you're going to host everything in your private data centers or whether you're going to put it into the club, uh, public cloud. And thinking about private cloud, you've got stuff like predictable workloads. It, it, you can be very, very resilient uh, in how you're defining those workloads. It is cost effective. 
it's reliable because you know what it is. You can get your hands on everything. Whereas if you shift into public cloud, with cloud native stuff, it's very elastic. So there's stuff like seasonal workloads, just in time provisioning, and and all of that adds complexity to your data center um, and how you're managing your applications at the end of the day. So the new data center, this is kind of how we see it as looking. It's, there's, you know, you've got your on-premises data center, you've got hosted private data centers, you've got private cloud, public cloud, SaaS applications, maybe some stuff in, in shared partners. And what, what we see it is as a hybrid multi-cloud, but we need visibility over everything to manage it effectively and to work, work in that environment well. Um, and, in, and in that, like our ideal state would be to be able to manage that across both and have a truly hybrid multi-cloud. So take your applications that you run in your on-premises data center and to be able to seamlessly move them to a public cloud whether that be AWS or Azure, and do that without too much uplift. So without like having to reskill people and, and stuff like that, which we'll touch on, um, touch on later on. But effectively, you want to be able to run your workloads anywhere, but not at the cost of performance. So you want to, to have equal performance, whether that be in your private cloud or, or if you're running it in a public cloud. But getting there is, is really, really difficult. So prior to working at Nutanix, I worked with one of the customers that we now look after. And putting anything into a public cloud, you've got like two main like challenges that, that will sit in front of you. And one of them is skill set. So you, there's a completely different set of skills required to running your your infrastructure on premises in one of your own data centers that you're familiar with to then porting that up to the public cloud. It's, it's a different way of managing it. If, if you do it in the traditional way, you'll end up paying a, a whole load more for it in the cloud. So it's very DevOps type approach. Like you spin things up, spin them down. It's, it's kind of like throwaway servers in some respect, but you've also got your integrations into there. So your backup DR, all your monitoring, You've got to cater for that in the public cloud as well as networking and security. So security on premises, like I said earlier, you've got your hands around the data center. So you know where your entry and exit, point, exit points are and you can, you can manage that quite reliably. Whereas if you move that into a public cloud, they could change one of their policies, which would then in turn affect your networking and security position. And it, um, infrastructure side. So the storage is you're not, unless you pay for it, you're not guaranteed the storage you're, you're um, buying or the availability of it. And there's no reservations and high availability for live migration of VMs. So you need to build that into your infrastructure. So what NC2 is or Nutanix Cloud Platform, it's one platform that will run across your private data center and your public data center. It's the same code base, it's the same UI, the same like management techniques. It's literally a single platform consistent across private cloud and public cloud. On top of that, there's native integration into the, uh, to the public cloud accounts. This point in the middle here, seamless movement between cloud, that is truly a thing. You can take a master image or, for example, a Citrix master VM and you can replicate that into NC2 on AWS or NC2 on Azure, and then turn it on and it's done. It's, you can move those images up, but more importantly, you can pull them back. And the license is portable. So if you buy licenses for uh, NC2 in AWS and you decide it's a bit expensive and you don't wanna run it up there, you prefer to run it on Azure, you can move the Nutanix NC2 licenses across to Azure. So it is truly portable and truly hybrid multi-cloud. And what that gives you is consistency across multiple different, I keep saying clouds, but multiple different data centers, because effectively that's what they are. You have NC2, which will run on AWS bare metal nodes. 
or as your bare metal nodes. And we install AHV, our hypervisor, onto those, and then AOS will manage that. And it gives you the same look and feel, the same user experience, but it's backed by the AWS and the Azure services. So it is cloud native, but the bit you see is just another Nutanix cluster, and it's running in another data center, which happens to be in AWS or in Azure. Um, all managed at the top here by that little triangle, Prism Central. So you can um, join multiple cloud or public cloud hosted clusters into the same Prism Central instance as your private cloud and manage them in the same way and use all the stuff that Prism Central will give you, um, such as flow networking or some of the DevOps services or desktop services we've got. So if you've got like a DevOps approach to deploying kit or Citrix infrastructure, for example, in your on-premises data center and you want to deploy that into AWS, you can use those same CI CD workflows with the same like de uh, development and automation engine, but just push that image out to AWS, which is quite a powerful thing when you think about the agility between the data centers that you manage. Um, some of the feature highlights before I get into a bit more detail about what it is. So there's a lot here to go through. Um, some of, I'm gonna pick a couple of the bits out which I've used recently, which is I, I think in an EUC and a Citrix standpoint is super, super beneficial. So just in time, scale and shrink. That's an obvious one. You could run, for example, an NC2 cluster in AWS as a DR location. And you could keep that cluster really, really small and just keep it ticking over. And then in the event of a DR, you can take that cluster, use the cloud portal and just say, give me another, whatever, 10 hosts. And it will then put those 10 hosts in because of the way Nutanix works and the way it's the integrations into Citrix, all of the Citrix stuff will just expand for you automatically. And then you'll have your environment, your DR environment ready up and running in the public cloud. Um, the, other, the other one which I've used recently is Hibernate and Resume. So Case mentioned earlier, we do a lot of performance testing. Um, problem with that is we, we're doing it all the time and we, we don't wanna pay for stuff overnight if we're not testing. So in AWS, you have this um, ability to hibernate a cluster. So you can have a fully built Nutanix cluster running on bare metal nodes in AWS. And it's as simple as going into the console and clicking on hibernate. What then happens, our management platform will take all the data and everything that's required to run that, and it will offload that to S3, and it will shut down the host and then give them back. So you're only paying for a tiny bit of storage in S3. When you're ready to bring that back online, you go back into your portal, click resume. In the background, the management platform will take all that data and it will rebuild your cluster for you, VMs, everything, lock, stock, and then it will power it all up and it's there. And it's super useful. And also the last one I'm going to touch on quickly is global expansion without physical DC presence. So working in a customer environment, quite often you have... Um, like, I don't know, we refer to them as like lone wolves, like these sales guys that are moving around the world and you need, you might onboard a load of people, say in Australia, but your business is hosted out of the UK and you need some Nutanix kit and some Citrix kit down in Australia. With NC2, you don't need the data center to back all your physical team. You can literally use a public cloud provider, build a cluster down there, stand up some Citrix environment, configure it so that it's globally available. And then they, their local point of presence will be built for them and managed by you out of your region. Um, this is just a quick overview of the global availability. So we do have more presence in AWS because that was one of the first public cloud vendors we onboarded. Um, we also have um, a, a fair amount of Azure presence globally. And then we've got um, third parties that will host NC2 for us in a bunch of different regions that we may not be onboarding with one of the public cloud vendors like OVH Cloud or Equinix. 
Um, so this is how it looks on Azure. Um, you link your private cloud to the Azure public cloud using a VNet and a VPN. And it uses it will deploy a product Nutanix Flow Gateway, which will manage the traffic between uh, your on-premises data center and your your uh, as your public cloud um, presence. Um, the bare metal nodes running underneath are all managed via in the same resource group and with the VNets that you define for them. As your services back all of this, but you won't like that's invisible to you as a customer. You'll still see AOS. You'll still define networks in AOS in the same way that you always would, but it will just offload that to the Azure services underneath. And this is a bit more detailed, so you can see your on-premises data centers with the bare metal nodes, and then the uh, Nutanix Azure nodes with your VNet assigned to the clusters. Up at the top here, you've got Nutanix Cloud Clusters Portal, which I will touch on in a minute, but for anyone that's used Nutanix and built Nutanix nodes in the past, the Cloud Clusters Portal is kind of like foundation for the public cloud. So it allows you to build nodes, reprovision nodes. Um, these are a couple of the bare metal types we have running in um, Azure and some of the regions we have right now. Um, this is literally changing all the time. We, we always see new regions being onboarded and no types changing within region. This is all on our uh, website if you need like real time data on what's available. And then let's have a look at it on AWS. Now, because of the way AWS works as a public cloud vendor, it was easier for us to integrate into AWS. So because their networking is a little bit more accessible to us, we can have a straight VPN from your on-premises data center into your AWS VPC. And then you can spin up your um, EC2 bare metal instances directly in that VPC, assign your networks to that, and then that will back it off. You don't need the flow gateway to manage the data in between the two data centers. It's as simple as setting up the VPN and then you point it at your um, your cloud clusters portal and then start building um, bare metal instances out there. As you can see, like I mentioned before, so AWS was one of the, or was the first region we onboarded. So we have more in terms of um, bare metal node types up there. They're all suited for different use cases. It's, it's well worth looking at what's available and then looking at what is best fit for the use case that you're you're um, uh, you're looking to deploy? The i4i, which we've recently tested, uh, is due to replace the i3. It is a very good node. You can get some good performance out of it. Um, but like I said earlier, it's worth looking at the node types that are available and finding the best fit for the deployment that you need. This is what I talked about earlier. So the, the hibernate and resume. So all this is, is just showing you how the bare metal instances will offload to the S3 bucket. And then you're avoiding that bare metal cost um, when you're not running it within region. And then when you're ready, it's literally as simple as click, click a button, click resume, and it will pull all that data back from S3 back to your bare metal nodes and then reprovision and stand up your cluster. <clears throat> this this is one I was going to touch on earlier, but I didn't see in the slide. So um, heterogeneous clusters, what it allows you to do is run GPUs notwithstanding. So GPU less nodes, it will allow you to run different node types in the same clusters. Now, it doesn't sound like a massive thing, but if you've got a, a DR data center, you could, for example, run three very, very storage heavy nodes and compute light nodes in uh, AWS in one region and keep that on all the time as kind of like a pilot light DR cluster. But then in the event of a DR or if something happens and you need to scale that cluster, you can't just keep chucking storage heavy nodes at it because it won't be 
like big enough to handle the amount of users you might want to throw at it. What you can do in that instance is push compute heavy nodes into the same cluster. So you'll have a very, very compute heavy cluster scaled because of the ability to add the different node types to the same cluster. This is touching on the cloud clusters portal. So it's at cloud.nutanix.com. Um, it's a common place where you manage all your clouds, whether that be Azure or AWS. And like I said earlier, it's kind of like foundation for uh, the NC2. And this is just talking about license mobility. So just to reiterate that, if you buy like, like Nutanix licenses, you can run them wherever you want. So you can run your licenses on your on-premises um, clusters or then move them up to either AWS or Azure. And this is just to show that, that it is an unbundled billing. So the customer would pay Nutanix for the Nutanix software, and then you would play whatever cloud vendor you decide to use for the bare metal hardware costs. And because of that, it gives you a flexible consumption. So you can either pay as you go, you can use cloud commit, or you can leverage existing term licenses and move them up and bring your own licenses up to the cloud, which gives you, I'm not gonna go through this whole slide, I'll just, I'll run out of time and then Case won't get to talk about the Citrix stuff. This will be in the recording, but it, it, will get, it gives you, so you can use the marketplaces to deploy this. You can pay as you go, bring your own. You can commit to, like if you know you're gonna use it a long term, you can reserve bare metal instances, which will give you like a better price on that in the cloud. Um, this is talking to the VDI licensing. So we have capacity-based licensing. We also have VDI. And the, what the VDI licensing will do is, and we talked, I've talked about this before, it will allow you to kind of lockstep your Nutanix licensing with your Citrix ones. So if you have, um, in this example, it's 500 EUC users registered for Citrix using their universal license, you can do the same on Nutanix. And then you can either put all 500 users onto three nodes, if you want, or you can put 500 users onto six nodes, or you can deploy 200 users now and add them later. It gives you complete flexibility with Nutanix and Citrix and be able to move those users around where you see fit um, at, and where that workload is best placed to run. This is a flowchart. This will come out with the presentation around what kind of license you should buy depending on, on the use case you have. And this is um, just a comparison between some of the two. Um, I'll um, just pick out a couple of points. So AWS, mixed node clusters and GPUs are available. Um, mixed node clusters in Azure is not right now available as with hibernation. So hibernation is in GA, in AWS, and in Azure, it's not currently available. And with that, hopefully, Case, I've left you enough time. <laughs> Sorry, that was quite quick. <laughs> no, you, we'll, we'll, we'll see how that pans out, Dave. Thank, thank you yeah. so much for, uh, for that. And for me, it's uh, the next... 10 to 15 slides will be about Citrix on Nutanix cloud clusters or NT2 as Dave referred to it. Uh, if we look at potential uh, use cases and, and um, the workload that we're, we're looking at, um, if we look at some specific Citrix use cases on NC2, we st we're starting off with business continuity with the ability to quickly build out DR sites in any cloud region using the existing methods. And I just answered a, uh, a similar question in, in the Q&A. One of the things that makes our solution or this solution so unique is that it, it adds an abstraction layer between uh, the infrastructure piece and the VM. So that means that you can run an on-prem, a VM on-prem and move that same VM without refactoring your golden image uh, to any of the hyperscalers running NC2 which means by itself that you'd have built-in business continuity because you're not modifying your golden image um, 
you have something that is uh, ready to go without any modifications. Um, there's on-demand compute where you can rapidly burst into public cloud for a seasonal increase of load. Um, maybe um, finance is running numbers at certain periods of time. They need additional capacity. You can do that with rapid scale or the on-demand compute. Rapid scale is um, very big if you're able to scale into public cloud with no code changing changes. Like I said, there's no refactoring of golden images. You can use them as is in the cloud right away. And then there's test dev, which is great for uh, Citrix test and dev environments. As the images are the same, you can use, so you can use test dev environments in public cloud at minimal cost using hibernation like Dave already mentioned. And then last but not least, uh, there's migration. So moving Citrix to public cloud can often be cumbersome. With NC2, it's really just a single click operation of moving your, your image up there, create a hosting connection to NC2, and stand up a new delivery group. So if we look at Citrix on Nutanix cloud clusters, Citrix solutions become on-demand and portable. Nutanix cloud clusters on AWS and Azure is Citrix ready, certified, and extends on-prem to public cloud using the Nutanix cloud platform. Again, with no changes to the look and feel of your admin UI. So that means the tool set that you're using on-prem is the exact same team, uh, tool set as you're using in public cloud. So same UI, same skill set that you would need. Um, if you're big on automation, then you can run the same scripts on-prem as you can do in public cloud. So from that point, it makes it really easy to move from one side to another uh, because there's no changes and you're still leveraging existing Citrix plugins. Um, it offers full support for MCS and PVS, as well as all the other optional Citrix components you deployed today. I think we can build out this slide and then move on to, uh, to the next one, uh, which is Citrix portability. Oh, one back, Dave. Thank you. Um, so worst is useful and there's a great video that Jarring Gibson, I think he's um, uh, attending this this webinar as well. Jarring Gibson created a, uh, a great blog and a video on YouTube where we show the ability to burst 2000 Citrix desktops onto NC2 on AWS in under two hours. And that's definitely useful for the use cases listed in, in the bottom, but let's just visualize how that would work. So you'd have a Citrix solution on-prem today. And you're moving forward, you need something uh, for your hyperscaler. So you pick a supported public cloud provider. In this particular case, we used AWS. We extended our Nutanix cloud platform on-prem using NC2 towards the public cloud. We extended the Citrix services to the public cloud location on top of clusters. And we migrated um, the VM from the on-prem scenario to the hyperscaler scenario. And from that point on, we build out a environment of 2000 desktops. So that means that in just about two hours, we were able to have something on-prem only, build out a, a cluster in public cloud, spin it up, install it, configure it, and replicate our golden image that we were using on-prem to that public cloud location, deploy 2000 desktops from that golden image, and have a fully operational uh, BCDR uh, site. And that was just under two hours. And th if that doesn't show the speed and the, the velocity at scale, then I don't know what it would do. So go to YouTube, look for 2000 Citrix desktops to AWS under two hours. You'll find a excellent video um, narrated by, uh, by Jarring. Now, obviously um, the technology is great, but let's just look at uh, licensing from, from a NC2 perspective. Now, Citrix just recently announced that their uh, universal license uh, that would take their hybrid use license and will allow you to pick your control plane and which cloud you want to use. So if you want to run Citrix on top of NC2, you'd have to have universal license or the new CVAT subscription on-prem term licensing. There is a really nice blog from Citrix uh, on this particular topic that we've linked in um, in, in this deck as well. Uh, previously, it was DAS or 1912 LTSR for public cloud consumption, but that's now changed with this new licensing model. So it's well worth 
taking a look at the article below. And I think, Dave, if you click one more time, you'll find the article. And then let's transition to how we integrate with all of this. So if we look at our integration points um, between NC2 and Citrix, now obviously we have Studio integration, which is exactly uh, the same deployment from Studio to any cloud in the same way as you would do today with AHV. We've got a plugin for Director, which is an integrated plugin to get VM stats regardless of where the VM is running. Regarding DAS, we have full integration to Prism supporting the one-click deployment methods. We've got a fully P, uh, supported PVS plugin for both on-prem and AWS. So if you're a PVS customer, you can move these workloads up into the public cloud and work on them in the same way you currently work uh, in an on-premises situation. Now, we also have a new thing called AG templates. And that's available using Prism Central based plugin. Basically, you create a template and use this to deploy your images across multiple clusters. If your clusters are all managed under the same Prism Central appliance, then this will be done for you, meaning you could have multi-cluster replication of your master images. And obviously, we've got demos on that as well, which we couldn't apply to this particular webinar. But if you'd um, look on YouTube, you'll probably find some, uh, some of our demos there. So if we look at provisioning in the cloud, what that looks like for us and what it would look like in, in AWS or um, provisioning using, uh, using Azure or, or GCP, with native cloud, there is some difference in which you will only have some certain supported endpoint types and platforms. It will require additional tools to get you there. With Citrix and NC2, you can copy your VHDX onto your PVS store in public cloud and spin up the VMs in exactly the same way as you do today with the on-prem solution. So how do we start that multi-hybrid cloud journey with Nutanix. If you want to start, then obviously time to value is important. And once you have connectivity in place and the clusters you build, you can replicate and start using Citrix on NC2 immediately. As I've said before, there is no refactoring of images required, uh, no new interfaces to learn, and no app, app dependency issues. That means you can get where you want to be and fast. Now, if we look at the efficiency gains in public cloud, we see additional efficiency gains using NC2 and Citrix. With native cloud, you're always locked into t-shirt sizes, and these can sometimes be a hindrance to Citrix workloads. Sometimes you'll have a multitude of CPU architectures in your same pool, which affects the usability of your desktop estate. With NC2, you have full availability of the bare metal you're deploying to. And that means you can size your workers as you see fit and not be governed, governed by a preset size. It could also get the full performance of the storage tier. So no more deciding what level of performance you want out of the disk. You get it all the time. And then why Citrix hybrid multi-cloud with Nutanix? We can build out that hybrid cloud in hours. As I've talked to you about uh, on that two hour video, we can manage all clouds as one. On-prem, AWS, and Azure, same UI, same look and feel. We can reduce disaster recovery times from days to hours. We've got a use case on that uh, listed in, uh, in, in the bottom here. There's cloud migration with no code change. We can use the same golden images that we have on-prem in public cloud as well. And we're cheaper than cloud native. And there's a, a significant delta there. And we're cheaper than uh, three-tier on-prem as well. So all in all, the same software, same licensing stack. And that gives you the ability to move from on-prem to public cloud, being AWS or Azure, and back again. And there's no lock-in. So for me, one of the, the, the key factors when embarking public cloud is to start off with your exit strategy. And a lot of customers are not aware of, of how important an exit strategy is until they already onboarded. Thinking about this, 
the onboarding mechanism towards public cloud is the basically the business model of any cloud vendor. Getting you there should be easy because that's how they uh, rope you in. That's how you get to spend money. The, the downside of that is that your exit strategy typically is a little bit more complex. So that means that having something that acts as a abstraction layer actually enables you to have a uh, exit strategy right from the get-go because you can move back to on-prem if you want to, or you can move to public cloud full-blown depending on your needs, depending on the requirements that you have with your workload. I think we've got a few additional resources in this deck before we open up for uh, for actual Q&A. Um, again, this is the Citrix DAS Omni Tennis Cloud Clusters in AWS test drive. This one is particularly to AWS, but um, I was informed that the Citrix DAS on Nutanix Cloud Clusters for Azure test drive would uh, be either live to, uh, this week or uh, soon, which means that you can run the same test drive on, on Azure as well. The thing is, like I said, uh, they're, they're basically the same. So additional resources that we wanted to share. Um, if you want to look at um, Citrix virtual apps and desktop resources, look at Nutanix.com slash solutions slash VDI slash Citrix. We've got customer case studies there, white paper for CVAD, uh, on Nutanix, CVAD on AHV. We, we've got reference architecture guides, best practices, and our NVDs hosted on portal.nutanix.com. An NVD is a Nutanix validated design. This means that we've tested um, the full stack from start to finish, validated that, and have that written up in an NVD. There's a link for clusters. There's a link for the desk drive. I think Jarian already shared the AWS video in the chat. And then obviously we've got the Citrix Ready pages uh, right there. So with that, I think we're uh, we're a little bit early, but let's open up for Q&A and see what's uh, what's left. Uh, Paul, did you um, manage to monitor, monitor the, uh, the Q&A? Yeah, I did. And we've actually answered most of them as you were talking. Uh, so there was one that I didn't answer. Uh, I guess you guys need to answer. Is GCP with Nutanix in the plan? I'll, uh, I'll, I'll give a short blurb on that. So one of the reasons why we started off with NT2 on AWS is because of the maturity of um, the bare metal offering of uh, AWS. So if you look at AWS, every single server that they serve into their data center will have a little piece of silicon that we can uh, use to do automation. So it's basically Redfish, which means that we can uh, execute API calls and uh, make sure that we have a full stack automation uh, on that side. With Microsoft, we started to develop something like that. Uh, they weren't as far as AWS was, but obviously they already had a bare metal uh, offering in their data center. We just kind of took that and, and moved it forward to make it even more fitted to uh, to the Nutanix offer. And if you look at uh, GCP, which is a obvious logical question in, uh, from my perspective, one of the issues that I would see with GCP is that they offer nested virtualization only for now. They're only um, uh, doing a nested, which means that if you have a high performance workload um, like end user computing might be, nested virtualization will have an impact of the overall performance. So obviously we're on the outlook and we love to have a, a bare metal offering from uh, Google in the GCP data centers. But at this point in time, uh, we don't, just don't have the infrastructure to build out a bare metal offering with NC2 on GCP. Hopefully that answers the question. Okay. I, like I said, most were answered during the session as you're talking, but there was a couple around Image portability services and Nutanix Move and mm -hmm. different ones now, but you mentioned those. I mean, so I'm not allowed to say this because I work for Nut I work for Citrix. I said Nutanix. I work for Citrix, so I'm supposed to say portability services better. Uh, in this scenario, in, in this sort of hybrid multi-cloud scenario, where you've got the single the common platform, then Nutanix Move just does it. Uh, the the architecture, the Nutanix architecture does just does it. These workloads become portable uh so there's no conversion needed so 
Um, no, definitely, so. I, 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 um, I fully agree there that if if you're, and I think I answered something in in the chat already. So if you're a Nutanix shop on prem using uh, vSphere, because Nutanix can run three major hypervisors, so um, ESXi, Hyper V, and Nutanix EHV. That's what we support uh, from a hypervisor perspective. If you run Nutanix on-prem today and you want to embark into public cloud with NT2, you can use, obviously, with AHV to AHV, there's no uh, um, no change in your golden image. You can just replicate your golden image and off you go. But for uh, vSphere or ESXi and Hyper-V, we offer something that we call cr cross hypervisor migration. So that means that we can still replicate your uh, your images and we'll modify that golden image in the destination location to run on that platform, which means that you can run Nutanix with ESX on-prem and then move your uh, uh, workload into public cloud on NC2 using our cross-hypervisor migration tool. Now, if you are not a Nutanix shop on-prem today, or uh, if you're thinking about moving from a three tier with ESX to Nutanix AHV on-prem or public cloud, then obviously, like you said, Paul, um, we've got a tool called Move, which basically um, does a uh, sync from a source and destination location. So we can actually point Move, which is a virtual appliance to your ESX cluster, let it go through all of your VMs. Obviously you can pick and choose which VMs you wanna migrate or not and then select your source or destination location and move will actually handle all of the migration process. Now, what it will do is it, it will migrate uh, the biggest part of that VM. And when you want to have that cutover date, cutover moment, it will only have to sync the latest Delta. It brings the VM down on the, on the source side, syncs it to the destination side, brings the VM up. And when that's all good, you can actually move on and uh, um, kind of uh, move away from the old environment. So autom from an automation perspective, cross hypervisor migration, if you have Nutanix on-prem today, um, obviously HV to HV, it's absolutely no problem. That can run without any interference of the golden image. If you're looking to migrate from, let's say three tier or another HCI environment, Nutanix Move is is a great solution there. Yeah. And I mean, so I know Citrix pays my salary, um, but I'm going to suggest the best way to do it. And sometimes it's not just from Citrix. I mean, the, the, the platform that Nutanix has got there, it's it was built to do exactly that. So why not use it? We've, we've just done that between our performance testing lab in our Nutanix data centers and AWS for a whole bunch of testing that we've just gone through on the new uh, I4I metal nodes. And it is literally, as Kay said, it's a single click move of the image. So I think that's actually all the questions, guys. Um, Stephanie, do you need to close the webinar down or any closing words? I think there's something about a poll or a um, well, actually, a couple of people just typed some stuff in the chat. I don't know if there are questions you can answer now or you want to take offline if you want to take a peek. Oh, there you go. Yeah, there's one from Richard. So how soon is Azure support for this? Azure support is right right there to, uh, to um, is there today. So if you want to do NC2 on Azure today, um, we, we've got you covered. Okay, and then another one from Carlos. How is it cheaper? Uh, <laughs> that's, a, that's a completely different discussion. Um, so there are TCO ROI studies. There's total cost of um, financial mm -hmm. impact or whatever they're called uh, studies. I mean, a very simple answer would be it's it's not just the license pro, license cost itself. It's all the manageability. It's all the infrastructure. It's all the the running of the infrastructure uh, stuff like that. There's a, there's a lot of studies out there that will show that running Nutanix or running Citrix on Nutanix is a more cost effective solution. We can uh, so Stephanie, let me send out a couple of links with the 
the follow-up mail. Yeah, absolutely. Just send me anything you want to include and I'll make sure I put everything in one convenient place for you. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, I think if that's the end of the questions, um, we did have some of you opt in for a chance to win a prize. And that is a $100 Amazon gift card. And I ran um, the Google number randomizer. <laughs> and our lucky winner today is Andrew um, Leach or Leitch. It's uh, L-E-I-T-C-H. So congratulations. And we'll get with you after the webinar and, and get your details. Um, oh, yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paul, Case, and Dave. It's so nice to have you here today. I appreciate your time. And um I will get all of this wrap up sent out uh, tomorrow and um, just appreciate you being here. Thank you. Thanks. Cheerio, guys. Thanks, Thanks very much. Bye-bye. All right. Everyone have a great rest of your day. We'll see you at another CGC event soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.